Hi everybody, welcome back to Revolve Headquarters. And today I'm going to share with you probably one of the most important lessons you're gonna learn all about making Neapolitan style pizza. Because I'm gonna teach you how to make a biga dough. What is a biga dough? There are three main categories of dough. There's direct dough, which is where you put all your flour, all your water, all your yeast, all your salt, all together, and you make a big dough. And then you have pre-ferments. And pre-ferments, you can have a poolish, which is a wetter pre-ferment, and bigger, which is a drier pre-ferment. Now, that might sound a little bit confusing. It's gonna become a lot clearer in a moment. So, making a bigger takes literally one minute to prepare. So this is day one. One minute, that's all you need. So inside our plastic container, we have our water. And then we're gonna add our yeast. Now, I like to use fresh yeast. Fresh yeast gives a really nice flavor, but I appreciate it's not always that easy to find. So if you can't find that, use an instant yeast as well, it's fine. Uh, and basically the way that the yeast operates, it likes to feed on the sugars in the flour. So by doing a bigger, you're giving it all of its sugar and you're letting it over the space of 24 hours eat all the sugar inside the flour and create a really nice rich flavor. So when you eat a bigger style pizza, you get a strong, nutty, sourdough kind of aftertaste. Okay, so now we have our yeast dissolved. What you'll notice about a bigger dough compared to a direct dough is that we don't put the salt in at this point. The salt is on day two, once the yeast has had time to activate and ferment. So now, water, yeast, flour. It's as simple as that. And what I do is I throw it all in like this, once, twice, and as you shake it like this, the flour and the water and the yeast are gonna combine into a scraggly kind of dough. So you don't want to bring it together into a dough, you just want to make a nice kind of stretchy bits of dough. So watch how we do it. We shake, shake like this, shake, shake, shake. And what we're looking for is for there to be no dry flour left. Now, I get my hands in at this point, and I just make sure there's no dry flour sitting in those corners. And you can see, if I wanted to, I could ball it into a dough, but we don't want to do that. We want to keep it like this. So that is our prepared bigger. Now we've finished making our bigger, we can leave it at room temperature for a minimum of 12 hours, up to 24 hours, and you're gonna get a beautiful bigger dough. Don't be too worried about exact temperatures and exact timings. The point is, it's actually quite a forgiving dough. 24 hours later, we have our wonderfully fermented, pre-ferment, our bigger dough. There it is and it just smells so good. Uh, and now, I'm gonna turn it into our dough. So, I like to take a spatula, and I lift this up, and you can see how it responds, and you can see that it started to become a little bit stretchy. That is all the yeast that has just been feeding all night, and become really, really full of flavor. So let's put it all in there. Still nothing difficult, right? One minute, 24 hours. Put it all in a stand mixer. You can, of course, knead this by hand. Not a problem at all. What you would do is you add your water bit by bit and you'd break it down and then you massage it and knead it into a dough. I prefer to use a stand mixer. It's easier. I'm not gonna make any qualms about it. I prefer using a stand mixer. Uh, it means that I can continue preparing other things and leave it to develop a really strong gluten structure. So, inside our mixing bowl, we have our bigger dough, and here we have our remaining 420 milliliters of water. I'm not gonna put it all in at once. I'm gonna put half of it in, and now I'm gonna add my salt. I add about 25 grams of salt for one kilo of flour. 
Some people go for 30, some people go for 20. My preference is 25. Just try it out and see what you like. So that's four teaspoons per kilo. Okay, and one final ingredient. This is my little, this is our little savior here. This is called dry malt powder, and it's really good stuff. It's a little bit hard to get hold of, so if you can't get hold of it, don't worry. You can still make beautiful dough without this. But if you can get hold of it, this basically is like a Kickstarter for our yeast, and it gives it a stronger sourdough kind of aftertaste. It smells really, really nutty and malty. Uh, and I just put two teaspoons of this per kilo. That's it. We put it into our stand mixer. We lock it. And I give it about 15 to 20 minutes on this. And that's it really, there's nothing more to it. And I think it's about time we turn the revolve on and uh, we can start cooking some pizza. Now our bigger dough is ready. So what I like to do is put a little bit of water on the surface just in preparation. And we can lift it up. Oh, there we go. All right. Let's have a look at this dough. Look at how elastic -y that is. It goes for days. Days and days and days, and look at that. Okay, that is what we're looking for. So, I always put a little bit of water on my hands. Counterintuitive, I know, to put water on something that's sticky, to stop it sticking, but trust me, it works. Can you see, it's not sticking. That's because we have a little bit of water on the countertop, and we turn it. And the process of this is basically to come in like this, Lift up, turn, and put down. And what you're gonna see as we do this, the dough is gonna become more and more tight. What we're doing is we're giving it a top and a bottom, basically. We want to create a really tight surface. By creating a tight surface, it's a little bit like when you blow a balloon. When you blow a balloon, if you think about that surface on the balloon, it catches all the air. So that's what we're doing right now, is we're creating a really tight surface for all the air to develop and get our nice air into our dough. So, you see now I'm starting to pull it under itself. Just like that, don't be scared of your dough, just keep moving it around. It's not sticking at all. There we go. And now, what I like to finish it with is just a little bit of olive oil. Now we just put a little bit of olive oil on the surface and onto our hands. Rub, rub, rub. Pat it like that. And you can see the air bubbles all developing. Go underneath and just turn it over once like that as well. And there we have our prepared dough. That's gonna go into our container. And that's just gonna sit now for about one hour and a half. Again, it's forgiving. If you leave it two hours, it'll be fine. Two and a half hours, it'll be fine. Just give it some time and you'll see it'll start to rise and then we'll ball our dough. So, lift it up and pinch and over to your weighing scale. And we're looking for about 260, 265 grams per ball. Fold it in, fold it in, fold it in. An ice cream cone, ice cream cone. And these are so, so full of air. That is the big difference <laughs> between a Biga and a direct dough. You can feel all the air inside this dough. And that is what gives it its wonderful light and airy crust. Uh, 
Again, you could let them go for six hours, seven hours, but anything after that, they start to overproof. So what I suggest is, if, they're, if you're gonna proof it for longer than that, put it into individual containers like this, let it rise for five, six hours, and then put it in the fridge. And then you can hold it at that level for a day, two days, and then when you're ready, take it out the fridge. And because it's already risen, you just let it come to room temperature and then you can make your pizza dough ball. So that's a really good way of extending the shelf life of your pizza dough balls. If you're gonna use them today, up to six hours, let them rise and use them. If you need it longer, put them into individual ones, put them in the fridge once they've risen. Okay, I think it's time we make some pizza. I can tell the Revolve is ready. So, have a look. Here is our bigger dough, rested. Our bigger dough balls, ready to be rested. And our five hour later bigger dough balls. And you can see they're really nicely risen. And what I like to show is, so look at all the air bubbles under there. We're gonna put this to one side now and we're gonna make a pizza. Okay, we go into our semolina flour, turn it over, and then we open our pizza dough. Give it a little stretch. You can see there is just air bubbles for days on this pizza. So we're just gonna put our Samazano tomatoes in the middle and let's just keep this one super simple. One for the purists, a marinara. A generous shaking of oregano. <laughs> I tell you, it doesn't take much work to do a bigger dough. It just takes a lot of time but I promise you that time is well, well worth it. Olive oil. There it is, beautiful base, really nice. Look at the crunch, so much air and it's so light, so light. That is a beautiful, beautiful biga. Let's cut it open. As I said, a marinara means that you can't hide anywhere. It's all about the crust. Look, cut through it. Look at all the air. Look at that. Beautiful. That is how we like it. Wow, let's get in there, look. Now, you can see you've got Beautiful crust, all the air in there, soft and crunchy. Beautiful base and a marinara topping. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why bigger is always better. Thanks for watching. Mmm.